Phoebe's Wheel. My show is called the Phoebe's Wheel platform. platform. And on my show, we discuss everything human interest issues, ranging from entertainment, politics, sports, you name it, that can get you excited and entertained. We discuss it all on the Phoebe's Wheel platform. Hello there, it's the Phoebe's Wheel platform. I am Phoebe Swill. Earlier on, we had a topic about Sierra Union Entertainment, and I said I'll do my best to see if we could have that topic again. Well, the day has come. Today, we're talking about Sierra Union Entertainment, and again, we're looking at the problems and challenges in it and the way forward. Now, to discuss that on my platform today, I have um, Collins Achi Pierce. He is actually an actor and he is a movie producer. He has won several awards and I am proud of him and I'm sure Sarah Leon is proud of him also. He's from the UK. I have Nick Asgill. Nick Asgill, well, I still need to introduce him. Most of you would know him by now. You see most of um, our Sierra Leonean music videos, both um, in Sierra Leone and out of Sierra Leone. You see they're directed by Nick Asgill. He's got his team. They're doing production and he's really good. I'll say he's a professional, he's an expert. Whether he agrees or not, I'll say that that's what he is. And Sierra Leone is really proud of you. Now today, it's more of like the diasporans discussing that because previously when we had this topic, it was done by Ellen Kista and DJ Box. So let's say that was the home base level, now not the JC level. So let's get the discussion rolling. I'll start with you, Nick Asgill. You've been in and out of Sierra Leone, but I know you constantly follow Sierra Leone entertainment, especially the music level. So what would you say are some of our problems and challenges right now you've highlighted in Sierra Leone entertainment, both in Sierra Leone and in the diaspora? Well, yeah, Phoebe, thank you for having me on the platform. It's I think, um, if I'm very honest with you, in the diaspora, the biggest problem is that disconnection a lot of people there don't really know what's happening in Sierra Leone. They have a perception of how things are in Sierra Leone, that it's all rosy. And so why do you think they don't know what's happening? Well, because there isn't a direct channel of uh, information flowing between Sierra Leone and abroad. I mean, I hate to talk about Nigeria and the Nigerians, but you've got to find the nearest example. The Nigerians have Ben TV. Um, they have NTA, Nigerian television. Every night you can go on TV as a Nigerian, you can watch what's happening back home. They show their news live. Sierra Leone, there's a cutoff. I mean, maybe it's it's a lot better now because of Facebook, but then you can't really verify the information. You know, everyone is now a Facebook journalist. When something happens, they just go there and they just talk, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that information flow makes it difficult for people to verify information. So there's a gap information. in the communication. There's a huge gap. And I think AYV is doing a lot to kind of plug that but I think they need to do a little bit more, well, actually a lot more to kind of reach that. So I think that disconnection of information in the diaspora. In Sierra Leone, I think it's all about capacity building. There are a lot of passionate, talented people, but there are no structures to build, train, equip, um, and give people the right set of skills that they need in order to kind of excel in different areas. But I know for sure we do not lack talent. We do not, not lack passion, we do not lack enthusiasm. But what we lack is proper professional training. Capacity building is quite low at the moment. Okay, speaking about proper professional um, training, Achi, you, you've been now in town walking with your movie and recently you were complaining about time management with our people. That's right. It's a big problem here in Sierra Leone. Um, for me, I'm so mindful of time that if somebody is one minute late on my set, I'm going to walk you out. That's me. Sorry, I'm too rigid, but that is it. Yeah, well, time is money. It is. It Every is. second counts. Exactly. Um, because I think Sailinian, they don't see it like that, like time is money. They just say, well, whenever I'm a chance, I can come on set and do my thing and go. But it's not fear of the other actors who are mindful of time, very time conscious, going to be on set on time waiting for another two, three hours for the director to come or the DOP to come or the other actors to come on set. I mean, in other countries, especially um, in the Western world, most jobs, they pay you by hour. So when you're 15 minutes late, however, you'll have to get the deduction. So you, you come late, it's your business or you'll suffer for it. It's going to be deducted from your pay and in some cases, you'll have to lose the job. And Sierra Leone, most jobs, they don't pay you by time. Why do you think 
um, especially with you now in the movie world. What, why do you think, what's responsible for that, people not being time conscious? Well, it's the mindset. I mean, it's something they've been used to. They've been accustomed to it. For them, it's nothing. Because they just like, I'm, I'm not going to say they're lethargic because it's just a culture. They see it like black man time as a culture. Ah, BMT. So if somebody wants you to be at his place or they have a function, they want it to be exactly six o'clock, they will tell selling at four o'clock, making that leverage. Say, well, fine, because they always come one, two hours late. But because we do this, we keep doing it, it's not helping the country. Mm. But if you put it six o'clock is the time, spot on. If you come after six, I'm sorry, you have to go back. I know it's difficult, but we have to start it. I'm not going to change the mindset of Sahelians because that's what's been done. What I would do in my own little way is when I'm doing my own production, my own set, I would not tolerate that. Even if you're the biggest actor in town, or one of the biggest actors in town, you come late, I will not reprimand you in the presence of the other actors. I'll take it to one side and let you know how I feel about it and inculcate that into me that time is money. Time management is just one of it. Now you're into movies, what other problems and challenges do you see in Sierra Leone entertainment, especially from the movie perspective? Commitment. They are not committed and to the task angle. at all. They want financial incentive. The actors will give according to how you pay them. If you don't pay them well, they will not be living well. And for me, that is not the case because you're killing your talent. If I watch your movie now and I realize you didn't deliver, I'm not going to make an inference that you were not paid handsomely. I just want to say, oh, it's rubbish. Simple. If you have the mentality to say, I'm going to deliver, see if this is what I will do to attain status. Regardless if they pay you or not, financially will come later. Build your reputation, build your foundation, so people will have faith in you. That's why these Nollywood actors they excel. Because if Mr. Wiz coming on set, you give him whatever to drink, even if he's not a, a, I mean, well, not drink, smoke or whatever. If he's not a smoker, he will smoke for that purpose. You understand? Because that's him. It's so you're him. saying they're willing to go extra mile to get the job done. Definitely. And make themselves what they want themselves to become. That's right. That's right. Okay, let me come back to you, Nick Haskell. Um, back to music. Well, Nick is really with music, music, and um, Archie is with movie things, so I keep switching them. Nick, now there's this thing I, I spoke to someone, and the person was telling me. The problem with Sierra Leone Entertainment, especially the musicians, is that they don't know the business of music. He said that's one big problem. Who said that? I won't tell you who. He said <laughs> the biggest problem is they don't know the business in music. <sighs> I agree. Do you agree? Yeah. But I don't think it's just the musicians. I just think people in general don't understand how the music business works and how business works. One of the first rules of business that we get is the customer is always right. So as a business person, you're always trying to please the customer. So how does client. that come into entertainment? Well, think about it. For example, you go to book, let's just use a rough example. You book an artist to come and perform. Um, you've already agreed that the artist is going to come and perform four songs um, and they're going to come and do their best. First of all, they come on stage, they come late, time management. <laughs> so you've already rubbed me wrong. Okay, put that one side. Secondly, you come on stage and you start miming, for example. That's bad. That's not good for business because if I wanted to just hear you mime, I would stay at home and I'll just download your music or put the CD and listen to it. Or get a fan of yours who'd replace you. Repl exactly, and have them jump around. So there's no live music. There's no extra oomph, like no no excellence, no pride of ownership in what they do. Um, I think that's killing us. And in terms of kind of um, you know the customers being right and getting the business structure. I've noticed in Sierra Leone, and it's not just limited to music, that money flows one way. And that's not really how the world is supposed to work. There should be an exchange. Like, that's why when you're driving down most streets, it's two-way. Even when you're going down a one-way street, the next street will be coming up. You understand? Like, the, the artists need to make money, but the artists need to spend money. The artists can't spend money if they're not making money. If they don't spend money, it's like this cycle that just doesn't seem to end. There's no business structure to make sure that when that man goes to the studio, that man records a video, or that woman does an excellent job, they're going to get enough money 
to live, survive, and also put back into their career and elevate. Well, then most of them would just think making money would be from sales of CDs or um, doing shows and launches. I think that is such a basic level. See, this is what I have a big problem with Sierra Leone, and I don't really want to speak and try and grammatize all of this stuff, but the world is changing. We must understand that. The way the world is right now, we cannot be using the old methods in 2001, 99, whatever, to, to live in this world. We're now in the digital age. People make money just by having their videos and their songs on YouTube. People make money through streaming, having your music on Spotify. You know, people don't buy, I can't remember the last time I physically bought a CD of an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't do that. We've all got smartphones where we now have um, Tidal and all of these things. So there are ways of making money, brand endorsement, Kanye West, the new Yeezy Adidas trainers. They're, they're that brand endorsement you're talking about, it doesn't seem to be working in Sierra Leone, not much. Well, why is it not working is the question. We cannot copy how it's done in America. We're in Sierra Leone. We've got to let's see Emerson, and I always say this, say this in most interviews. Emerson once said something. He says, Salomon not a study with a copy. So we look at what's in America and we try to do it here, forgetting that we're not in America. Look at what is in America, bring it here, take it apart, look at what works, look at where we are and recouple it together. For example, there, there's an artist at the moment who's about to release his own brand of um, sunglasses. I'm, I'm very confident they're going to sell. Look at LAJ as an example. A few years ago, LAJ had the bags, yes, they had the, the trainers and, and they yeah. sold them. They sold out. I, I, I speak to his marketing manager back then and they sold out. So why can't the branding thing work? You know, it can work, but if you try to do it the way it's done in America, it's not going to work. Do at you all. see lack of the knowledge as one of the problems? Ah uh, yeah, definitely. Capacity building. I think knowledge, exposure, all these things are very important. You know, knowledge is important. But then the thing about knowledge is you can't force feed knowledge to someone. Knowledge comes from you wanting to know more, wanting to be more, and wanting to do more. And that's a decision that you make as an individual. Okay. So long not blame lack of knowledge. Knowledge is out there, everywhere. <laughs> it's just a matter of um, um, implementing it. Yes, knowledge without action is dead. No, it's not much sharing, it's there. I mean, I'll give you an example. The other day I was in the office, um, a friend of mine plays cricket, you know, musician. In fact, he's the third fastest bowler in Africa. He's a Sierra Leonean, he plays in King Tom. Nobody knows that. He walked into the office and he was reading this book. He put the book on my table, like, yeah, let's read this book. And I took the book home. I haven't read it. But I just flicked through pages and I'm <laughs> like, wow. Like, you have this stuff in Sierra Leone. And the guy's developing himself by just reading passages from the book, you know? Wow. So the knowledge is there. We just go search for it. Actually, now, when it comes to movie, one, one um, two ways looking at it, how they'll make money, would say from um, sales of the movie and um, from the premieres, the VIP luncheons and all that. Is there another way of making money? Well, first and foremost, before you go into the production, you go to pre-production, the production and the post-production. You do your project and see how you want to spend it. It depends on the project or the, how much it costs you to do the work. If, like when I did the new side and I spent 35,000 pounds, so I have to make sure I keep doing that. Did you that make lot. all that money back? Not yet. That's why I'm still doing lots of mm. things. Because you can, before doing the DVD, you do the premieres. Different countries, see how it goes. Sell your rights to TV stations. Sell your rights to your local or other. But now that's in your case because you have the opportunity, you have the connections and mm. all that. Now, is that applicable for our local producers here who don't have that exposure, the opportunity? But that's why I'm here in Sierra Leone to help out. I've availed myself, lots of producers now. When I'm going back tomorrow, I'm going back to the UK tomorrow, I'm going to get lots of their different movies. I'm just going to like Paris for see the ones I would like. And then take England and then they'll start showing those movies, national television. Even if you help, it's not going to be possible for you to help every one of them. Well, yes, but perhaps that can accent with the impulse to keep doing better movies. Because when I come... I've, I've seen a couple of Sierra Union movies. I'll admit, I'm impressed. We have very good talents. That's when it comes to the, the, the casts. We have good talents.
But these talents, when you talk to some of them, they don't make much money what they're being paid for their, their role in certain movies. But then when you talk to the directors or the executive producers again, it's another thing of the, um, the losses they face. They put so much money into it and they don't get it back especially with sales of uh, their DVDs. Mm -hmm. Piracy is a serious problem. A so they don't even get to make half of it through with the, the sales of their DVDs. And with the premieres and launchings, it still doesn't cover the cost for production, plus paying the costs. So it, uh, when it comes back to chin work, the, the costs don't get to make much money off their talents. Yeah. Have you identified any way we could walk around this and make all ends try to benefit of their hard work? Well, there is one way. The government needs to intervene. They need to help out this industry. It's dying. Because producers can never produce good movie with limited funds. They need, because, put it this way, if you want to do like proper movie, you want to have like a crane, or you want to have like a drone, it, whatever you need, anything you do, you need money. Correct. Me doing this movie right now, I know how much it costs me to pay the police, to use the police vehicle, and to use the personnel as well, and to even get location and everything. Once a good location, somebody giving you his premise, say, use my house. You know, just, you know. Actually, for the government to help, it's a good idea, it's one thing. How can they help an ununited industry? I'm very sorry, but I mean, I won't say it's news to me. Coming here, I finance a lot. I mean, I know lots of things happening. But if the government puts something on the table and says, okay. Let me refresh you quickly. Um, a while ago, last year, in 2015, the Sierra Leone Music Federation made a proposal to the president at State House Correct. calling for either a ministry of entertainment or a Correct. commission to be set up. Correct. Now, what happened was another party from the movie angle, they came up and said, they don't accept that. It's unacceptable. The proposal was made without their consent, so they we were they were on Can they I? were on radio, television, social media. They were bitter about it. Although at the end of the day, they all came together after intervention from other people. They came together and said, "Okay, we don't want a ministry. We want a commission of entertainment. You wanted to come in." I'll just interject, Mr. Ache. I've been following this particular issue for maybe five years now. In 2016, five years. Um, in 2011, they signed the Anti-Piracy Act. That Anti-Piracy Act is a, an exact replica of the Piracy Act in England, in America, and in Nigeria. It has all the provisions for every single person to make money, from the people that paint on the streets, the painters, the dancers, the artists, the singers, the movie, everybody. The problem is most people, lack of knowledge, have never even read or know what's in that document. So they don't know what provisions are already in place, number one. Number two, if we cannot implement a simple piracy, anti-piracy act, how are we going to run a ministry? Look at the sports ministry. Look at what's going on. Thanks People for fighting for position. Exactly. I think if we try and do a ministry, it's the same thing that's going to happen. Somebody approached me at the Abacha Sisters okay. um, premiere, the premiere yes. and they were telling me all oh, this fantastic thing. And I really understand that's going to benefit about 12 people. We have an entertainment industry that's over 100,000 people, if we were to do proper calculation, yeah, we'd see. Countrywide. Right. So then why are we going to do something that benefits 12 people? If I was part of that organization, I would have kicked off against the ministry. In fact, they I was came against down it. To saying if they want a commission. We don't need a commission. If what you look at need? the act, all we need is a registrar. The first thing that needs to happen in Sierra Leone entertainment is like a census. At the moment, we don't know how many movie producers we have. You cannot allocate resources if you don't know numbers. How many actors do we have? How many dancers? How many musicians? How many painters? That's what the registrar does. That's number one. You need to be able to register your artwork. When Mr. Achi does his movie, he needs to go somewhere and register the copyright. When uh, 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 Mr. X does their song or Mrs. X does her song, she needs to take it to somewhere where they register it and they give her a unique code that belongs to her. So on, if we, it doesn't take a ministry to register people. This is my problem. What, what happens with so a ministry? So you're saying we don't need a ministry, we don't need a commission. I'm saying so let's just use that us, piracy You're going to have first. to tell us now what we need. A registrar. We're going to go first for a break. Um, 
while we still get our conversation here uh, focusing on Sierra Leone entertainment, the problems and challenges in it and the way forward. Now there's a new video I watched. I actually got to get this video through Mohammed Mutala. He's the CEO for Salon Jambori. And this video, it's a true life story of what happened to one of our Sierra Leonean brothers in, uh, in America. He was actually assaulted by a police officer. So while it was all happening, he was there with his phone. A friend of his was there with the phone. So they took a video of part of what happened. So in this music video you're about to watch, you can see some of the clips there are from the scene itself. So you see, while we're here struggling, we can't even make entertainment a career where people can make money. Our brothers and sisters out there in other countries are suffering. Let's get a look at the video and we'll be back. It's the Phoebe's Will platform. What? I ain't do nothing to nobody. Nah, nah, y'all can't do that. can't do that to me. That can't do that to me. That can't, that's my ID. That can't do that to me. I got everything on camera. I got everything on camera. Cops live on camera, don't lie. Yo, I see you watching me. <laughs> why I'm watching you, why you watching me? <laughs> It's a new movement, more wild. <laughs> Call it, I got everything Let's on camera. Go. Now that I realize uh, it was good that I got everything on tape that televised. Uh, all cops uh, telling lies. Uh, they will stop and harass you, murk you, go to court, then go now. That was some bullshit. We ain't even do shit. We walking home from the store on some bullshit. bullshit. Stop get harassed by cops for no reason. If I read them, it's right, gonna take him to prison. All one such shit. Word. You started it. I'm a witness to a crime. So I'm part of it. Lucky to be part of it. With no camera, you got hammer. You might play MC with the hammer. Cops think you're effing sleek. Huh? When you go home, sit down and watch this. No, it's gonna be effing sick. Knew it was wrong by the way he approached When it swung on my man, I lost it. I just I got everything on camera. I got everything on camera. I got everything on camera. Everything on camera. I got everything on camera. Everything on camera. I got everything on camera. I got everything on camera. That's some bullshit. My phone, put my cam on, just to get to stop me. No, I got my cam on. Don't trust the cops on the streets. Got license to kill, but my cam is the only thing I care on. Leave by the gun, say you die by the gun. Mike never had a gun, why he died by the gun? He was running while you shot him, turn around, kept shooting with his hands up. I you shoot a man with his hands up? Leave me, every time he leaks, leave it. So the cops walk away, got my heart bleeding. I can't eat, I can't sleep, feeling helpless. Looking at the video, him screaming, can't breathe. You can save life like I did. If your cam on, my shot my man if I did have my cam on, look at the video, wow. you can tell by the look on the spot, no. she knew he was dead, I got everything on camera, I got everything on camera, I got everything on camera, everything on camera, I got everything on camera, I got everything on camera, that was some bullshit, we ain't even do shit, I got everything on camera, that was some bullshit, we ain't even do shit, I got everything on camera, everything on camera,
everything on camera. So everybody I can get on camera. I got everything on camera. This is some bullshit. We ain't even doing shit. I got everything on camera. This is some bullshit, man. We ain't even doing shit. I got everything on camera. Everything on camera. You know the family is heavy. I got everything on camera. I got everything on camera. Everything on camera. I got everything on camera. See that? I got everything on camera. That was some bullshit. So please, this is don't forget bullshit. to show your camera and it's how you see police interact with anybody. Camera, he swung first at Make sure you take it. He swung first at you. He swung, he swung first at you. It's the Phoebe's World Blood Forum and we're still talking about Sierra Leone Entertainment, the problems and challenges in it and the way forward. I love that song by Junior, Junais. Um, I've got it on camera. I see he, he did a song straight off just by that. Do you know how many of our other um, um, brothers and sisters are suffering assault in other countries? Just recently we heard of um, some of our sisters in, in another country, it's an Arab country, they're suffering there. Some of them are even impregnated by their bosses. They're working there as housemates. Can you imagine? It's because back home we don't have much to offer. Imagine entertainment, how much employment that could offer Already it's not as developed as we're expecting it to be or as it is in other countries, but do you know how many youths are being employed just under the umbrella of entertainment? So imagine we put on all resources together, we all come on board and make it a better and strong industry. How much more employment would have and how much more people would be saved? We're still discussing Sierra Leone Entertainment here, and I still have Nick Askill and Collins Archie Piers to get the discussion and conversation going. Now, Nick, let's come back to where we left off with the, um, the um, Piracy Act. Do you think the Piracy Act covers all what it needs to cover in addressing problems in entertainment in Sierra Leone? Yes. Every single thing, from who should do it, how it should be done, how people should get paid, when they should be get they should get paid, everything is inclusive in this one document. This document was created by some of the brightest minds in Sierra Leonean entertainment. Why would we create it and then ignore it? Nick, I know um, the the um, piracy act is really something you you into, and you're not in favor of getting a, um, a ministry or a commission. But let me come to you, um, Collins. Do you think a Ministry of Entertainment or a Commission could do us some good? Well, because I'm not based here. No, I'm well, you don't have to be based here. Well, You're I'm part of Sierra Leone Entertainment. Work here. Yeah, well, yes, but if it's actually a monitoring problem, perhaps it might be mindful of what we're doing. I would have preferred to have the Ministry, but again, as I've been advised by people who live here, that they would just be willing to do that. So, um, so do you think getting a ministry is better? That would have been better. What we should be mindful of is that um, once we have the institutions, it's what these institutions can do. About the people who would be there, that's a secondary issue. They could put the wrong person, you could make noise about changing the person and then see how it goes. But then getting the institution is the first step and it's the biggest step. So you think in getting a ministry would do some good Because work. they're going to be mismanagement of fun. So, so if we're getting a ministry, what kind of people would you advise we put? Reputable people. People who have a passion for the industry as well. Entertainers, you say? Yes, yes. Because they don't want it to die. Because this is what they've been fighting for all this while. I'm not saying they should put me because I know my passion for entertainment, especially in the industry. And I know Nick as well is passionate about what he does. But we have a few seminars and so like that who can do it. Because when once their mind is set, they know what they want to do, they can. Why am I in favor of the ministry if they can do it well? Then obviously funds are available, they know what to do, the institutions are all set up, the right people are there, and they will like just keep pushing the, the entertainment in going. But if it's not monitored properly or there's nobody, no regulation body or anything, it's gonna be we're just gonna waste our time. 
and obviously another open for people to make money. And um, Nick, if we put the right people, do you think a ministry will do us some good? I'm not in a position to answer that question because, I mean, I will ask you a question. Do we have any other ministries that focus on you? But then the problem That's now effective. is that here, the rules differ. I ask the questions. Well, <laughs> so actually, the that, I, I'm not one to just follow status quo. I'm very logical in the sense that I've been looking at what's happening with the sports in, in ministry. Yeah. But I can't believe my eyes. Like, they're killing... The but then, you know, in other countries, especially Nigeria, for example, in 2014, I think, and 2014 to early 2015, I, um, I was online, I saw something, their GDP, 15% of it is contributed from the entertainment industry. Sierra Leone, we dare not say even 1% is being contributed. Correct. So it's a thing where entertainment can provide money for those it employs and for the country as Correct. a whole. Correct. So without a ministry or commission, do you still see us getting to that point where Sierra Leone entertainment can contribute to the GDP of the country? Yes, not only contribute How? to the GDP, it can also substantially change our image abroad. When you talk about Nigeria at the moment, most people talk about, they'll mention a Nigerian musician or they'll mention a Nigerian film star that they know. You understand? If I told you how much in dollars Niger Nollywood made last year, you would scream. Nollywood probably made more than a combination of several industries here. Now, how can we make money without a commission and a ministry? Very simple. Money makes the world go round. We need that basic structure in order to have money circulating. You know, again, I, I reference Emerson and I'm not promote, I'm not here to promote Emerson. I think you're a fan of Emerson. Well, I'm a fan of anybody that's logical. I listened to his last album, Home and Away. He dropped so much Don't knowledge. worry, that makes the two of us. Like, it's a, look at, for example, there's a song, Green Paper, where he talks about group economics. The concept of group economics, that's why the Jewish people are so strong. That's why, you know, the Lebanese community, the Indian community, because they spend money around, they circulate right. it within themselves. When we get our money, we spend it elsewhere and they take our money abroad. We don't spend our money ourselves. The filmmakers, how do they make money? How the production costs? For example, we should be negotiating deals. We've got TV stations now. There are three TV, TV stations. I watch, for example, Star TV. I haven't seen a Sierra Leonean movie on Star TV. I haven't seen one. I barely see Sierra Leonean music videos on Star TV. Uh, I barely. Let's call a oh, spade a spade. We're here to talk. You to hardly you. watch. I watch TV. Ask these guys. I spent the whole of yesterday installing the TV now in the office. One so thing I, I can say, I home. do watch two TV stations in Sierra Leone. That's Star Television and AYV. Same. And truth be told, both right. of them are really promoting Sierra Leone. I totally with their disagree. Entertainment pro no, well, based on my monitoring. Correct. They're based on their programs and it depends on the time you, you watch them. Because you know, their stations, well, because I work, I understand how it operates. You have time during the day for everything. Oh, There's a no time to play everything you have. But from what I've been seeing, they play Sierra Leonean music videos. But one thing I like again about the two stations, it's not just any riff rough video they play, it's just the good ones that you look and say, oh, so nice, I love music this. So it's one thing, honestly, I'm satisfied about. It's not too much, they don't play throughout the day, but every day they play at least few videos, few Sierra Leonean videos. I, I would just add to that, I think it's very good that they do that, but here's what the fundamental problem is. There's no structuring. Okay, I'll give you an example. MTV, BBC, my work experience, I work for ITV UK. I spent two years at ITV. They have section and chunks of programming that they do. What tends to happen with both Star TV and AYB, which I'm a big fan of, you'll be in the middle of watching a program and you'll cut to something else. You Very understand? And, and that's appalling. Now, when you, see, when you say from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, for example, like yesterday was New Year's Eve, both stations were rebroadcasting news from two, three days before. When in MTV, for example, they would have taken yesterday and done top 50 music videos of 2050, Sierra Leone music videos, or they would have done top 10 trailers, they, it would have been more centered towards promoting our own content. You know, I understand there needs to be a filter, you can't play everything, but I just think that 
programming directors need to focus more on boosting our entertainment capacity by showing our stuff. There should be at least 9 p.m. one day of the week when you premiere a Sierra Leonean movie from the last 10 years. I'm sure we've made good movies in the last 10 years. That's scary to do because once I can recall, when I was working at AIT, Africa Independent Television, we once played a Sierra Leonean movie. Correct. We had a case to take us to court to okay. pay about about 50 million or 100 million euros. But did you guys so get you the release the big, form So you see the biggest, exactly. The structure is. So you see that's what it is. Correct. So to trace those movies, mm -hmm. I've been running about with some because when it comes to Star Television, I am the programs manager. Correct. I've been running around with some to just, we can't take your word and play. No. Your word does not stand in business. That's where so that we're from sign. the piracy act Well, for them to come to the office and sign a document so we start playing the movies, that's been a big challenge. Well, you know, so what, you see what it is. You know, Miss Sue, we go back to that whole thing about the registrar and the piracy act because this is how it's meant to work in a civilized world. When someone gives you a movie and say, "I have the right," you must be able to go somewhere and cross check it. So you call the registrar's office or you send one of the guys down. They go there with the code and they can tell you who actually owns that piece of work. Simple, but in Sierra Leone, that simple thing cannot happen. Our movies can't be played. They're suing TV stations. Everybody's like, you know, we'll drive a play. And speaking for of a the movie. movies, yes. You see, so what you say and I can understand is just for us to be mindful of these things because you can even just put somebody's music in your, in your, in your movie. Correct. Like my movie now, they're playing it in flight, even in Sierra Leone. Now, if I take in Beyonce's music and put in my movie without her not knowing. She can even watch Ibu in Sierra Leone and say, exactly. oh my God, what is this? Because you, you never know who's watching at a particular Thank time, you, so you don't get so. yourself in trouble. Correct. That's right. But now let's come, up, let's come to the contents of movies. Do you think our Sierra Leonean um, village movies are depicting Sierra Leonean culture? Well, not exactly. So I've watched a few. I mean, they try to mimic the Nigerian way of doing things, which it should depict our culture. I know we don't have that many uh, medicine or, or Baba or whatever they call them here. I know there might be one or two, but if you start going down that road, Nigeria is all, all over the place. Every little town you go, you know about them. And there's no way you can imitate someone and, and intend to excel better than the person? Never. You know your culture better than I do. This is it, you see. So we need to have that so we're doing Sierra movie, let's be different. Actually, do you think it's a problem with our culture not being um, known by the younger generation? Because now, oh. just one example, you'll see if you ask, say, take some young people and ask, what's your tribe? That would say, Mina Timini. Okay, Timini, waiting on a popular for, waiting on a culture. Okay, you create waiting on a popular for, waiting on a culture. Men, they waiting, you know, take it through. How many young people you get that will tell you something good? You're right. Do you think that is one of the problems we're faced with in the movie sector that they seem to be portraying Nigerian Ghanaian culture instead of Sierra Leonean culture? Well, yeah, that's the problem. You're right. You need to educate them. But I'm not going to blame Sierra Leoneans too much because we're still coming up. And it's easy when you're coming up. We're still babies. You want to imitate the ones who've made, I mean, created the platform, made a name for themselves. You want to just say, well, this is how they do it. I want to do it that way. But we need to educate them, let them know about the rudiments of filmmaking. I spoke with a Nigerian friend of mine who was in town recently. Um, she's also into mo movies. She came, she was on a low profile, and she was saying, the thing about Sierra Union is this. Um, she said a few things in clear, and I was like, wow, so you can't like this this week, Tim. She was like, you guys, your language is so sweet, and there are things about Thank you guys you. I like. And I was like, really? So you didn't get to know all this before? And she was like, yeah. I said, okay, but then you've been watching some movies. And then she brought up that. Now, Nigeria, when we started, according to what she was saying, when we started, there were other people, other um, mu uh, movie people, say, um, she mentioned um, India, for example. She said, we didn't go to imitate all those people. What we did was, we knew the value of our culture, how rich it was. So we sold out our culture. Wow. And she was saying, the problem with you guys is, you seem to idolize or iconize um, Nigeria and Ghana that you don't want to be original. You come and just take off from them. You copy things from them, including... She, she, I was so embarrassed. Oh, Honestly, yes, I would yes, say yes. this. I was embarrassed. She said, um, I see even your dress code, because she, she was here for about two weeks. She traveled up country and back. She said, 
what I saw in your movies is not what is happening in the country. I went to some remote villages. I didn't see them dressing in a way I see in the movies. Mm. And I and I me me wait guy I saw I want begin make the guy him. I was like, even you people, I went to Nigeria, I saw some places, You, the way you dress in your movies aren't real. And she was like, excuse me, exactly. some of those things, <laughs> some villages, it is real. When you see our movies, certain villages you visit, you just know, okay, this story is about that village. She was saying it's real. From the way they dress, it's, it's real. The way they do things. She said, we are not original. And I was so embarrassed. I didn't have a way to defend it. I well, really didn't have a way to defend it. We don't have archives of our culture. We don't have people who were in arts before who you'd run to. Because, well, we have some, but then they're almost always so busy. I would want to do my movie in less than a month. I have my budget or everything. And then I want to go to Nick. Nick is almost always busy. I have my own plans. I have time working with. I can't wait for Nick to be less busy for me to get access to Nick. Do you think we need like a library or something with archives of our culture or things about our, our heritage that could help us? Yeah, of course, of course. I'm dying to that. Yeah. So who are the people you think we should help get us all those... Um, well, actually, your Spain side is a name, I mean, we all know and he's done well. So we can even get ideas from him because I believe that's what he lectures or that's Julia Spencer has been pissed off in Sierra Leone Entertainment times without number. Well, yeah, I won't blame The him. thing of disrespect. That's another one. Do you think mentorship is playing a key role in Sierra Leone Entertainment? Well, I don't think so. I'm not here, sorry. I keep Nick, saying, what would you say on. about that? Yeah, but, yeah Nick. Over <laughs> mentorship. <laughs> uh, I, I mentor people, and that's my mentor. That's one of my mentors right there sat there in the flesh um, and I also mentor other people um, I think there's a lot of Brayu Bobode, there's very little mentorship, Brayu Bobode is different from mentorship, mentorship is when you mutually respect someone, you work with them, you, you love and admire what they do and you try to emulate and grow with that, Brayu Bobode is when you just knock man on corner and say give me 20 grand, give me 30 grand that's different, that's not a mentor um, just to kind of double track just a little bit, Julia Spencer, there's only about three people I've spoken to in Sierra Leone that know the content of that piracy act we were talking about. Julia Spencer is one of them, Bolo Spencer Coca is another one of them. Um, I haven't met a third person, sorry. Those are the only two people that I have met that know what's in there. Um, secondly, we t you're talking about our culture. We must always remember that Sierra Leone it was a border that was enforced on us. From the beginning of time, it was different people living in different regions, and then during colonialism, everybody got crunched together, and then they mapped, they divided it, and said, okay, you guys are together. We're gonna call it Sierra Leone, Sierra Loa, right? Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a rich difference in all these cultures coming together. And I think that heritage must be shown. We need to have confidence in who we are. I spent several years working solely in the Nigerian entertainment scene, working with their musicians. I was even talking like, oh, come now, bro, I'm setting it up for now. <laughs> oh, the, please don't do it here. No, I really <laughs> did. But the day I got up and I said I was Sierra Leonean, they were all shocked. They couldn't believe it. And from that day, I have been unapologetically Sierra Leonean. I wear it on oh. my forehead and on my chest. Like, you just know? Serious. So we need to do that. And the other thing I would say in the movies, from what I noticed, we need to just speak our language. Let them put subtitles. We now, we're trying to speak English, and English is not some people's strongest language. Then, you know, they get it for now. They're American, Nigeria, yeah, what mm, up, man? That's no, right. listen. What up, nigga, what up? I, first of all, <laughs> that's a word that should not be said on TV between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. <laughs> I see that a lot on our TV. You know, so it's just having this direction. The problem is everybody is so busy, they kapu 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 yeah. kapu fetch for space. And this is not just entertainment, we're talking about Sierra Leone as a whole. Yeah. Um, even when you go to drive in town, when you look at the Okadas, the taxi, oh my, any half space, everyone's just trying to wear in there. Nobody's really strategically looking at how things are flowing. Okay, let that man go first, if that man go weak, no. Two people will be right this and they'll be arguing for 20 minutes. When if you just waited for 30 seconds, let that man pass, everybody would flow. And I think that is infused in every aspect of our society. 
um, the entertainment side is just a reflection of that. It's just the culture that we're living in at the moment. Okay, it's the Phoebe's Full platform. We go for another break and we get back to talk to more people here on the platform today. Phoebe Swill. My show is called the Phoebe Swill platform. platform and on my show we discuss everything human interest issues ranging from entertainment, politics, sports, you name it that can get you excited and entertained. We discuss it all on the Phoebe Swill platform. You're watching the Phoebe Swill platform. Um, Annie Mezzel, you're here with us. Welcome. Annie, you were doing something for Sierra Leone Entertainment a while ago, a structure you were putting up that was demolished. So what's going to happen to that now, your project? Well, first of all, I must, um, I must say um, thank you for inviting me to your famous um, platform show. Happy New Year. Thank and, you. And um, happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Oh, Miss Will, it's a pleasure being here. Right back to your question. Well, as you can see, I'm right here, and um, I took those two officials of those two people can stand to court while I was even away. And yeah, I'm here, and fortunately, or happily to say, I won my case. Okay. My court case. And That's good. They've given them up to the 8th of January. To see what they can do. And you were supposed to um, launch your project in April, right? Definitely. Is this going to slow you down in any way? Definitely. Is it still going to happen in April? Well, it depends on the two individuals what they're going to come up with because, as you all can see, my project was already done, was already finished. I'll allow you to explain in details what the project was about. What was Sierra Leone Entertainment going to benefit from the project? Well, it was going to really benefit my Sierra Leone entertainment in a, in a sense that I was planning to bring in top producers and top artists from Jamaica and the United Kingdom to come and exchange ideas and talents with our own entertainers right here, or should I say artists promoters, producers. So your structure, what is what was it? It was a, um, an entertainment um, training center, like a, a workshop, where it was, you know, bringing the entertainers, almost like our entertainers, training them. Because I could see they got talent. Our musicians got talent, they're trying. But they need that training, as Mr. Ellis Gill said earlier on. You understand? They need that experience. And that experience should come from other artists, producers, who are more experienced. So that is exactly what my plans are, or what my plans are. And so you're not going to give up, I guess? Definitely. We're still going to get that structure. Okay. Back again, up and running, because that is my plans for my music industry. I promise that to them. They're looking forward to that, and I'll make sure that does happen. And we wish you good luck because it's for the benefit of all of us. So good luck with that. Thank you. Ms. And thank you for joining us on the program. Thank, thank you, Annie. Thank you too. So Nick, Nick, um, I made to understand that a um, few months ago or about a year ago now, you guys were trying to form a diaspora union so that you could get a direct link from Sierra Leone and you guys that are living in, in diaspora. So how far have you gone with that? Um, Mohamed Akmalikama, first of all, I'm commending your efforts, especially Nick and Mr. Pierce, you know, for such a contribution towards our entertainment industry. But looking at the fact, I'll start with you, Mr. Collins. To be more specific, at why is it, is it that most of our young, talented movie stars, everyone is aiming to be at that peak? One, for you to become a best movie star, there must be something within your brain, upright. Education needs to be a priority to you. 
but today you can attest to the fact that a kid at the level of let's just say basic examination can prove to or attest to the fact that oh I'm going for rehearsals today, tomorrow I have rehearsals, or next tomorrow I have shooting. How do you think that we can improve our entertainment industry to the lapses we're facing? That is one. And perhaps to you, Nick, let's just look at the ministry or maybe um, the commission. Don't you think that politics has been the order of the day in our musical industry? That is one. Perhaps, Mr. Collins, most of our movie stars lacks the values. And even musicians lack the values. What values do you refer to? Um, feeling to be more specific with you, you can wake up one day to say, I want to be an artist, without even penning down good lyrics. Secondly, I won't edit anything. I'll just walk through the studio room and do the recording. The next thing I'll do is start pasting it on various social medias by saying, oh, I'm a big star. The next moment, I won't even give it to whether my song is suitable for the audience, I'm just satisfying myself. And two, specifically, most of our stars today, superstars, are very fond of going to, let's just say, shows where they are not invited or maybe paid as guests. They just go there just because what? They want recognition Free appearances, from the audience. That is two. And perhaps you can even attest to the fact that most of our recording studios, there is no priority to be fixed on something. Right? We try to adopt another man's culture when we figure out that we have lots of things to follow. Are we saying that everyone needs to be a Nigerian? So for you to do a best song in Africa, or maybe in Sierra Leone, perhaps if Timaya today says, oh, Lego, so the next day again, I'll go to the record in Syria and repeat the same word, Lego, this is the thing, let's just say. Copycat. That is, and perhaps you can attest to the fact, talking about um, archives, historical backgrounds. Um, like Black American History Month, I was a special guest in the American Embassy. And what I learned is like every year, 23rd February, different people who made contributions towards the development of black history in America, like Rosa Park, Harry Topmans, you know, you have history about them. So what about our own culture heroes? Thinking of Ami Kalon, Great Jebe II, Celia Kroma. Are we not seeing musicians imitating Every um, um, May 11, you have Bob Marley night. What about Salia night? All those things disturbing us. So we have more to say. Thank you very much, for your time. Thank you very much, Akmalin, for that contribution. Okay, as we wrap up now, I'll just get your quick responses to the questions that were asked to you. Um, I'll start with you, Mr. Achipias. Okay, yes, you asked a question why, I mean, um, the copy order months and work always had me. And the lack of basic education. Lack of basic education. You see, I would say it's because of inferiority complex. Sahelian, some Sahelians see themselves way inferior to the Nigerians who just want to mimic them as you say perhaps if um, Timaya says Lego now, they want to like or use that same terminology or phrase or whatever they would have used. It's all like we us Sahelians, we need to look and see you know what? Let's do something different. Let them copy. Let's even create something that people will be ad people will admire and say, "Wow, I never knew Selenius have got talent." I try to be exactly. I try to be different when I do my stuff. I mean, because when you do something that somebody has already done, you don't stand out. When you do something different, you feel like that wow effect is there. Mm -hmm. So I believe inferiority complex is one of the reasons. And again, you just want to like be like them, as they mimic the American accent, the way they talk, oh man, what's up, man? It's not called fun. You can see it, it looks so awful. I've been in England for 26 years now. I've still not developed the accent. I speak my normal thing. When my child speaks, you hear, oh, hi, dad, how are you? I don't speak that way. I speak my own way. We ain't say even my even want to speak more than Tony Blair or more than David Cameron. And it's not done. If you got it naturally, fine. But this is it. So that's part, that's your two reasons why I believe. I mean, if you're complex and just want to like equate themselves with these people, think they can do the same thing they've done or the way they're doing their thing. 
Um, the other question was... Um, lack of basic education. Lack of basic education. Well, this is the problem we face in Sierra Leone. Everyone wants to act. Everyone wants to do things without even, not even having the talent. You might have got a little bit of, like, I mean, training here and there, but it might not be enough. Do proper training, know exactly, as I was saying, the rudiments of filmmaking or acting. So when you have to go into character, you know what to do. You're not going to overact or even underact. You just should be on point. You see, like me, I was trained uh, by British Film Institute. And one of the things they told us when we were training, when you're acting, if the volume is on mute, will the viewer still understand what is happening? If body language will say it all. At times, you don't need to scream. Just one look. One of the films I featured in, I played the role of the president, when the director was saying to me, now, shout as if you want to kill somebody. Shout as if you're upset. Shout as if you, you're angry. He was using all the, I was like, what's the difference between all of these? So, you know, <laughs> that was for me, even though I think I know it all. That was a learning call for me. There was one bit he was even saying, shout as if they've just killed your wife. I said, but what's the difference now? You know, and now they've killed your child. And now they're going to kill you. And now, <laughs> you know, so that was like letting me go into character well. But these are all things we need to learn. We don't know these things because the little bit that you've learned, you want you're to satisfied and content satisfied. with it. Yeah. Okay, I'll go over to you, Nick. Quickly respond to your questions. Correct. Um, I think the first uh, yeah, question was, was asking you about, about diaspora union. union. Um, I think right at the start of the project, I said, um, the program, sorry, I said that there's a disconnection I'm not between... I'm saying you know, you the project business. That's what I'll forgive, <laughs> forgive me. No, but seriously, at the, at the top of the program, I meant, mentioned that there's a disconnection between what happens sometimes in the, the diaspora, diaspora and the reality on ground, um, and that is it. We have a lot of theorists, people there is a disability talk, there's a bit theory, but they don't come back home enough to come and interact and see what's happening. And I think that's why the union takes so long. And then obviously, naturally, people have ego over Sabi or anything, and they, when really and truly, the reality is, we all at some point in time need to leave the comfort of the internet, the 24-hour light, whatever it is over under, and come, can interact and build and help and develop. I think that's why the Diaspora Union is still somewhere in the, in the air. But hopefully 2016 this year, by God in your power, um, we'll be able to develop and move forward in new that year, way. New year, new resolution. New year, new resolution. New achievements. I think um, also uh, Ackman. my brother mentioned, Ackman mentioned uh, politics and entertainment. Well, the order of the day in Sierra Leone appears to me is that there's politics in everything. Um, unfortunately, I subscribe to Sierra Leone first, politics second. But well, that's not how things work here. I just believe that when you leave Lunge Airport, nobody cares if you're SLPP, APC, RFM, Black Leo, nobody cares. All you're they know is Sierra Leone. Leone. Yes, they, it's just, okay, you're Sierra Leonean. Oh, do you guys have a war? Oh, do you have Ebola? That's all they ask. So let's put away that party politics for one second. If we truly want to put Sierra Leone first, the entertainers are going to need to put that. Well, I will quote my brother again. I won't mention his name. But poor oh, I thought it was Emerson. That's it. Uh, poor no good. <laughs> poor no good. Poor no good just simply is the fact that a musician will compromise their whole existence for a hundred thousand dollars. In fact, let me bring it down. Yeah. For one thousand dollars. <laughs> you understand? They buy them really cheap. But the thing is that man is struggling. They, there's no way of him to make money. So if somebody can get one thousand dollars, they sing, he lets self na 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 babu on for whatever that man might support them. So that politics in entertainment still, we can't, if there's politics in sport, there's politics everywhere. We just need but to wake it, up and support Sierra Leone. see, even in Nigeria, they just concluded election. Well, I can't say just because it's been a few Last months year, now. yeah. Um, between Good Luck Jonathan and Muhammad Buhari. Correct. The entertainment industry there, yep. they were so active in it. Correct. They were wearing their t-shirts, supporting, dancing in the rallies. But I didn't hear much of them singing songs or doing movies as a of campaign. They were clean. It was just it was them clean. appreciating their rights as citizens as an to individual. vote and support. Thank so you. So some of them were with Good Luck Jonathan, like 
Genevieve, um, those people, Omotola, two who face, else? Am I, M a two face. I Most them. of them were right. taking sides who their candidates were. Yes, but there was to. nothing like a song or a movie they'll do no. as campaign. No, that's it's propaganda. Just, See, there's a difference between propaganda and exercising your right to have a political party. We're all allowed to choose. Because now, we're all no, we are, we are allowed to. Now, you political party, now you own. You can support the opposite from me. That's our difference. We can still be friends. We can still relate. But let there be a boundary. Law and Obligate and Kampa Entertainment, because now you're brainwashing people. So there's a difference there. So that politics is alive. Um, you also mentioned something about the star value. My clients, I can only speak about my clients. Um, I have a number of clients who are high-profile Sierra Leonean entertainers, and I know these people work really hard. They spend a lot of money on their projects. They travel. They do their thing. They don't go to shows for free. If they're going to go to a show, they'll come as a guest. They'll come and watch. They'll come and patronize because that's what we should do. Celebrities hang out, right? But God forbid the day my client goes to a show and begs to perform or goes to a mm. show and pays to go and perform. It should not happen at all. You need to have that value in yourself. That tell where you they take the go show where you they pass pass let them they see you outside. Do you think that's desperation for popularity? Well, I can't say desperation for popularity. I think it's a lack of structure. For example, I'll give you a perfect example without wasting too much time. They had this Eastern show a few days ago that was supposed to happen, and strategically it would have been really nice for one of my clients to perform. But what he then did was go through management and we contacted the organizers and said, okay, yeah, listen, we've got this artist, they've really got this song, it would be really nice for them to come and perform, can it happen? That's how it should work. So it's all about marketing. Marketing is about getting so you yourself out there. Yourself. Thank you, but it's the right way. If you just turn up at the gates, they beg for going inside, they can't pay, then you did be in, they want jog mic or they want jump on that stage, then you can just bobo yourself. You, there's, you know, peasants, you gotta do it properly, you know? Okay, well that's what it has been here. You've been watching the Phoebe's Will platform. We've been talking about the problems and challenges in Sierra Leone entertainment and the way forward. Thank you for staying with us and take care.